So I'm taking this little guy home today. And he just says, well, if you need help, he said, let me tell you. He said, I'll just preach for you. And I mean, he's always that upbeat. And he's always positive. And, and I looked at Joey, and this is God's truth. I looked at Joey, and I said, now, Joey, if you could preach tonight, what, what would you say? He said, hope. I mean, he didn't even think two seconds. He said the word hope. He said, I would talk about hope. And, and, and I said, well, what would what scripture are you going to use? And where would you go? And, and then he started in Genesis 1-1, and I knew it was over then. <laughs> but what we were talking about, Joy, you said Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, right? But what he was trying to say, and, and it, some, forgive me here, but sometimes it takes... Just a few seconds to get in the same wave pattern and understand what he's saying. Because Joey's got a true heart for God. Mm -hmm. And and I I was just praising God because it's kind of like God is helping me here to help this little man. Because I do want to encourage him. I can see a mighty man of God here. Mm -hmm. But you were telling me in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. First of all, why did you use that? You were saying, I mean, he made all of that. So since he made all of that, what's next? Got a table top. <laughs> I loved it. I said, what? He said, well, God made it all. And since he made it all and, and everything's been, you know, he's created it. He takes care of it. And he's in control of it. That's right. Mm -hmm. Always. Always in control. And, and now he didn't say it that way in the truck today. You're like, thank God. I, was, he, I, I mean, he got that preacher's hat going on there just for a minute. He said, I'm feeling the Holy Ghost, didn't you? Well, we both did. <laughs> I know we did. We did. Praise God. So is there any, is there ever a time when God's not in control? It's always. He's always in control. Oh, yeah. Now, Joy, you said since he's always in control, he created everything. He's always in control. Then you and me can have what? Hope. Oh, yeah. I like this one right there. Do you have a verse you'd like to share with us? Yeah. I mean, and get, get a good one now. Of course, they're all good. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Bible's good, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Lordy. I was uh, <clears throat> looking through Titus. Titus? Oh, I passed it off. That's right. I thought I had it. That's all. It was Titus. So, so did you find the verse in Titus? And it's right there in front of the Hebrews and Kind of in the middle of the uh, New Testament, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay. So, what chapter are you going to in Titus? Um, let's start with verse 4. Of what chapter? Chapter 3. Chapter 3. Okay. Now, before we even skip folks, how many believes that we have hope? Amen. Amen. Now, Listen to verse 1 of chapter 3 of Titus. Put them in mind to be subject to pray. Principalities. Principalities and power to obey. Magistrates. Magistrates. To be ready to every good work.
to obey. Majesty. 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 Now that's, uh, and I like this though, that's, that's the kind of leaders that you're in this world. Yes. But you know what? God's the king. God, he's the greatest of all, isn't he? It's so we ought to obey him. That's right. Yes. Especially Sandy over here from Kentucky. H O P E. H O P E is hope, right? Mm -hmm. Well, let's let's create a word for each letter. Okay. Now think about the H in hope. And I was sitting out here tonight, and, and you got me inspired on this because we got to talk about hope. You said God created everything. You said he's always in control, and I, I agree with that. And he said, You said because he is in control, and then this is a good message for Mary tonight because he, because he is in control, okay, you can trust him, and that brings us hope, right? Now, when I think about hope, the age, Joey, remember the other night I talked about the hills, Mount Calvary. The Valley of Psalm 23, mm -hmm. and then Psalm 24, we're talking about Mount Zion, the coming again of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I used a verse in that that came back to my mind. Psalm 121.1, okay? And, and you know what Psalm 121.1 said? Well, let's read it together, and I'm going to give you the first word for the letter H. And let's call it if we're going to hope, we're going to ask for help. Amen. We want help to come. Now, Joey, can you read Psalm 121, verse 1, please? Yes. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help. Woo! Hope Amen. is about knowing help is coming. Amen. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Everybody say this with me. The age of hope. I look into the hills from which come, whence cometh my help. And we went through that message a couple times. It was like, okay, if somebody's lost and they need the Lord, they can look to Mount Calvary and be saved. If they're in the valley, they have the comfort of the shepherd. If, if like dad, my dad tonight, he's getting all happy about heaven, he's looking toward Mount Zion. Amen. So we're looking under the hills from whence cometh what? Our help. How many of you know if there was no help to receive, we couldn't have hope? I just think when we when we hope, aren't we hoping for help? We're saying, man, I'm, I, I mean, I've got hope. So that means help is on its way. Amen. And, and, and that excites my heart. And i got to tell you something. i got, I got to... With you and the Lord, and by the way, you do need to shave a little bit. I'm telling you why. Now, I'm not the one talk, right? <laughs> come here. Come here. You did inspire my heart today, and I love you for that. Because I see a heart of a young man that loves the Lord. And you really want to glorify him. Okay, we have the letter H. Yes. Meaning help. H-O-P-E. Okay? Now, let's go to the O. Let's go to the O in hope. Are you ready for this? I wrote this word down today. Optimistic. Folks, if we're going to have hope, then we need to be positive about thinking about it. Amen. And we need to be optimistic that it's coming. In other words, defeating discouragement and depression by saying, Lord, it's going to happen. My help is out there. Do we? Are we going to be negative about it? 
Are we going to be optimistic about it? And, and just a verse that I turn to that touches me about praying and seeking God is way back over there by the book of Revelation. There is the 1st John, 2nd John, and 3rd John books. And Jude, I want to go to 1st John chapter 5. Joy, look at this. 1st John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. Okay? Now, it says, And this is the confidence that we have in him. Okay. If you play the drums and you're not sure you can do it, you are not confident, you're probably not going to make it, right? So, do you feel confident that God's going to help you? So, do you understand that word? It means, I'm hopeful, I can do this, yes. right? Amen. I've got this positive outlook, and I have my belief system intact yes. that says I'm confident. Everybody grab a hold of that word. Amen. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, Amen. he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Amen. So when I think about hope, Joey, I think about the letter H being help. And I think about the letter O being optimistic. In other words, confident that what I ask He's hearing and listening, and he's going to do it. Amen. How awesome is that? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> is that awesome, congregation? Amen. Amen. I mean, now listen to me, folks. What does Steve? What? What does it mean to you? What Steve's saying tonight about what he said to me? So when you come up here to do this, you got confidence. Yes. That says, you know what, I think I can do this because God's going to help me do it. Yeah. All right? I'm talking to him, I'm praying to him, and I'm asking him to help me. And guess what? I'm confident he's listening. Amen. How many of you have hope? Yeah. How many of you in that hope package that you have? There's help. And how many of you know it's a sure help? Yes, sir. It's not a misguided help. It's a sure help. Yes, sir. And how many of you are absolutely confident, optimistic, that when I pray and ask him with my petitions, that's your prayer request, he's listening. Yes. And it not only says he's listening, Exodus 3, we can turn over there to the burning bush, he said, I know what you're going through. I've heard your cry. I know their sorrows. But he didn't stop there. He said, I'm coming down to deliver them. Yes. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Folks, it says, whatever we ask, we have. Yes. Now, I know it said it within his will. So we got to ask Christian requests. Yes. Come on, somebody. You can't pray a sinner's lustful prayer and expect God to answer that. Oh, I want to be with her. Let me tell you something. You better do what God says to do and keep all the emotions and guide your will, everything about you, in tune with God. And when your will is in tune with God, amen, he'll listen to your prayer. He'll hear your cry. He'll hear your petition. And he'll give you. What you've asked him for. Amen. Confidence. Amen. Optimistic. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm optimistic that this is true. H-O. What's the next letter? P. P. And that's something good too. And you're not going to like this word, but it's one that we have to throw in this package of hope. It's called patience. Mm -hmm. No, listen. It's not always going to be the snap of the finger. Oh, I'm going to pray the prayer. One, two, three. You know, we heard this crazy commercial. 
It's about 6.30. We're driving to church. I'm trying to catch a little weather. I want to know what this rain's doing. And this crazy commercial comes on. And this gal is speaking these words. Folks, before I even tell you about it, it amazes me at how stupid we've become in America. Sorry. But this lady goes, I spent one trip to this hypnotic thing. And I, all my cravings and all my food desires were gone. So I sat there and Darlene got a little tickled with me. I said, Darlene, I have been hypnotized. And everything in my life has just now changed. It's all good now, forever, forever. Listen, maybe that works. I don't know, but I'm going to tell you something. All is repaired with just one swing of the pocket watch. Come on, somebody. I don't know about you, but any of you in here ever tried to eat right and diet? How many of you say it didn't happen in one setting? Come on. Be real with me. Hello, somebody. I just got to tell you something. Some of the advertisements of today apply this and every stain will go away. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell you something else. I'll take stains out of clothes too, but it'll destroy the clothes as well. Throw gasoline on it, light it, man. It'll take all the stain out. But it'll just destroy the whole thing. Look, not everything is the snap of a finger, microwave, drive through window society. And God tells us in Romans 5, Joy, let's turn to Romans. Romans chapter 5. I'm going to give you two verses in the book of Romans about patience. And I think we got to understand when we, when we have hope and help is on its way and we're optimistic about it, sometimes it's not going to happen as fast as we would like. Marion, I mean, honey, your testimony is beautiful, okay? First of all, don't second guess what you've done tonight because that was God, okay? Don't second guess that. But it's not always easy, is it? It's not always a snap of a finger. So with patience, sometimes we wait on what's coming. Okay? We got to wait for it. In, in Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 5, and, and you've probably read it many, many times, but it, but it says, verse number 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in... Oh, there it is, Joey. We jo- rejoice in what? Oh. Right there. What does it say? Hope. Hope of the glory of God. Now I'm going to read verse 3. And not only so, look, look, you guys here. But we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Patience. Experience and experience hope. When you've asked God for one prayer and He answers it, how many of you know you can tell somebody else right now? There's sometimes there's instant miracles. We're not going to deny that. Instantaneous miracles can happen. Right. How many of you also know there's times when you tell somebody you've got to change your course, uh-huh. you've got to change your lifestyle? You got to change your spending habits. You got to change how you do this. Yeah. And how many of you know when you've changed that habitual part of you and you start doing the right way, sometimes it can take months, but things can turn. Mm-hmm. Amen. Right. Amen. How many of you ever owned a home and had a mortgage on it? <laughs> and how many of you know when you first went in there, you're like, well, I can pay a little extra and I can do this, stay on time and all that kind of stuff. But little by little, I'm going to get there. <laughs> but how many of you know it didn't happen overnight? Right. And how many of you know it took a lot of years of habitual staying on track, paying on time, yeah. doing the right thing, till finally the reward came, you had it paid off. Amen. How many of you done a car that way? Amen. 
anything that way. And you're like, praise God, that was the last one. Isn't that a great feeling? That's a great feeling. That's what God wants in our lives as Christians to have that liberty. Not to be in bondage, folks. Come on, somebody. Listen, listen. I've had people come to the altar, and I don't even know why I'm saying this now, but I've had people come to the altar over the 40 years of, of 39 years of being a preacher and pastor. And I want to tell you something. Some people are in big trouble. You know, I thought that you have a few hundred dollars of debt is huge. But there's some people that's come and prayed and said, man, I'm in such debt. You know, I'm sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 in credit cards. I want to tell you something, folks. You got to understand your character's out of control when you're doing that. And you got to reel that in. I didn't say you're a bad person. You just got to turn and do the right thing. And when you do the right thing, it's going to get fixed. Amen. But I want to say this to you. You got to be patient. Mm -hmm. The next paycheck you get from your, your employer, it may already be gone. But you say, I got to keep doing the right thing. And when you keep doing the right thing, your ship will turn. Amen. So, Joy, I think patience is a big deal. Mm -hmm. You got to wait for it. Okay? Got to wait for it. This boy may be standing by me, and he may be one of the most fascinating pastors in the future. But he's got to patiently wait for that day to come and, and the growing processes. And I hope to be a part of helping him to do that. Romans chapter 8, we quote it all the time, don't we? Romans 8 28. But I'm not quoting Romans 8 28. That's not where I'm going. Going to Romans chapter 8, verse 25. That's where we want to go. Well, let me read verse 24 because I just now seen the word jump out at me there as well. <laughs> Romans 8, 24 says, Joey, you want to read it? For we are saved by hope. We are saved by what? Hope. Is that cool or what? Well, read awesome. the rest of this. But, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, what why does he, he yet hope for? Now look at verse 25. Wow. But if we hope for that, we see not. Then do we with patience wait for it. See, the scripture says that. Yes, it does. See, hope, to have hope, you don't always see it. You're hoping for a change. All right? So I look at the package of hope and I see it this way. Hope says to me, I've got help coming. Mm -hmm. H. Hope says to me to be optimistic. Because what I've asked God in my petitions, he'll give. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. P. Patience. You've got to wait for it. It might not happen as quickly as I'd like for it to happen. But it will happen. Amen. You know, I've been almost 120 days trying to reconfigure and turn my own world around. It, it's been a tough year. But you know what? I am right now less than two weeks out of going back to Maryland and having my next MRI. Can I tell you how it will feel if there has been a change? I am so hoping. I've tried, but it didn't happen on a dime. It didn't happen day one. Honey, listen, I, I got to be honest. It starts with what happened with you. God speaks to you, and you get energized, and you get enthused. That's the start. Okay? But our bodies are prone to getting up in the morning, and that same energetic feeling we had today, we can get up in the morning and have a discouraging down, oh my, this is not working feeling. I mean, I have fluctuated up and down at times, six pounds at times. 
I would think, man, I'm hitting it here and do it again and be up, down, up. But then I noticed something. As you keep at it, the numbers start going down. They still fluctuate. But the numbers are not up here where they were. They're down here now. So it's consistent 30, 33, 35 pounds. How cool is that? God is awesome and he's helping, but it's patience and waiting. Mm -hmm. And, and you've got to do this for a long time. You've got to keep doing this every day, every day, every day, every day, until finally it's your habit. Amen. And, and faith becomes a habit. Christianity is a lifestyle. Okay, Joy, we're going to read one more, and it's H-O-P. What's the next one? <clears throat> oh, my word. The cheerleader says, give me an E. e. Okay, you know. Well, what do we do with an E? I, I believe it's this. Expectation. Expectation. I, I know we talked about help is coming. To be optimistic about what we pray for. Be patient to wait for it. But don't you think we have to have the, the, the righteous expectation? Let me show you the difference here. Proverbs 10, 28. Proverbs 10, 28. I have two verses, and then we'll be closed. I want you to watch this. Proverbs chapter 10. And when you get to Proverbs 10, shout an amen. amen. Oh, that's good. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 28. You're almost there. Good for you. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Proverbs 10, verse 28. What's those first two words? The hope of righteous. The <laughs> what does it say, Joey? Read, read all that. The, the hope, hope of righteous shall be gladness. Did you believe that? I believe it. Oh, the, the hope of the righteous, does it make you glad? Yeah. God created everything. Okay? Yeah. He's in control. <laughs> Therefore, you and I, we can do what? We can do what? And it makes you glad, doesn't it? Right, so but look at this. It doesn't stop there. The hope of the righteous shall be gladness. Look at it, folks. But the expectation of the wicked shall perish. Wait a minute. I said the E is expectation. My expectation is not going to perish. The hope, the expectation of the wicked perish. Okay, I've got help coming. Amen. I'm optimistic about it. Yes, amen. I'm going to patiently wait for it. But I'm going to live with expectation. Amen. And my expectation will not perish. Amen. Did you hear this man say, I'm going to be greeted by loved ones on the other side? That's expectation. Amen. And that's an expectation that does not perish, but lives forever. Amen. There's a difference in expectation. The expectation of the wicked is crumbling and going to stop. Folks, listen, I don't want to make nobody mad here. But I'm going to tell you, I've listened to these debates and issues and everything these people have been talking about. A lot of the stuff that's being talked about is going to perish. It's not going to go beyond squiddling squat, whatever that is. But I'm, <laughs> I'm just telling you, the expectation of the wicked perishes. The Bible says it does. Amen. Sunday, Larry, I've been thinking over the songs you sang, Great as I Fail. i got to tell you something. That summer and winter and all the stuff that that song said still powers through my spirit. Amen. And, and I, I'm just telling you what. We have something that's so great. God said in his word that he commanded day and night and it would never cease. He said in his word he commanded the blessings on Israel and it would never cease. I, I just, it blew me away. There is no diplomat on the planet, no country, no government, no scheme, no nothing. No one world order, no nothing is going to buck the commands of God in the Bible. And he said, if, if you can trust me, he said, if you can break my covenant 
with the day and the night, amen, then you could probably break my covenant that I made with David. But guess what? You can't break the covenant of David. I got up this morning. We said we'd be here at 8 o'clock, and the sun was up and ready to go. Do you hear? And it'll be that way tomorrow. It'll be that way the next yeah. day. And yeah. there's no atheist going to stop it. Nobody, I know I'm a believer, going to stop that cycle. God says it's going to stay in place. I'm telling you right now, I read that, and it so pumped me up that everything God has said has given me an expectation, and it's true. Glory to God. Heaven is, listen, there won't be no accidental heaven got blown up. A terrorist took it over. Let me tell you something. There won't be no hijacked Holy Ghost plane. Glory be to God. There won't be no devils invading into heaven. Glory be to God. And there won't be anybody dethroning God. Let me tell you something, honey. God has got it under the control. I've got help. I'm optimistic. I'm going to be patient and wait for it. But my expectation will not Perish. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. I need you to ride with me a little more. Come here, we got another one to read. Come on, we're going to be one more, okay? Right there is Proverbs 10 28. Now, we just was there, right? How cool would it be if we could just go to the next chapter? Chapter 11. Let's go to chapter 11 of Proverbs. Verse 7, Joey. Verse 7. Proverbs chapter 11. Last verse we'll use tonight. What's it say? Dying. 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 Let's read it again. When a what? When a wicked man dies. Okay, now, when you see those commas, see that? We want to stop there. We want to get that whole thought together so we say it. Everybody understand? When the wicked man died, you want to say it whole phrase, okay? Now say it again. When a wicked man died. Okay, here's the next part. His expectation shall perish. Say that. His ex expectation, expectation shall perish. And, and the, the hope, hope of unjust just men, men perish. perish. Folks. When a wicked man dies, his expectation perishes. I don't know if this, I'm sure that many of you with the minds that you have, you could come up with a, a word for every letter. I know you could. It would probably be better than what I've come up with. But I'm going to tell you something. I look at whole, the whole package and I see, first of all, I see help. Help comes from the Lord. Amen. I see that I can be optimistic. What I ask for, I can have in His will. I need to patiently wait for hope. Yes, Lord. Now listen to this. It sounds to me like the expectation that I end with here, that package of hope has expectation. But it sounds like it doesn't end with the grave. Because when a wicked man dies, Dying is the grave. When a wicked man dies, his expectation perishes. Yes, sir. Let me tell you something. Look at me. Hell is not going to be a beer party with my friends. No. It's not what hell is. And how many of you know there's a bunch of people out there funding this issue and thinking, oh, I've got this expectation, man. When I die, buddy, we're going to party and live it up in hell. No, you're not. I'm telling you, when you die as a wicked person, your expectation dies with you. But if that's the case, then can't I flip that coin over and say, just by interpretation, if the wicked man's expectation perishes at death, then ours surely must live on. Amen. So we've got to have an expectation that never perishes. Amen. Can you say I have hope? I have I hope. hope. Can you say in my package of hope I've got help? Yeah. I'm, optimistic. I'm optimistic. I'm going to patiently wait for it. Patiently and wait my, for expectation my expectation 
will last for an eternity. Father God, we thank you for this wonderful night, Lord. Thank you for helping me through the day, Lord. I love preaching and playing drums behind me, Lord, and working with men, Lord, and cleaning the church and cleaning the church that we go to for the uh, school week, Lord. And thank you for this great service, Lord. And Pray that people be coming in that you thought I could help with. <laughs> Amen. And we thank you, Lord, and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 